Howdy everyone, welcome to the stream. My name's Crofto, my special guest over here, Timo. Um, we are here hey for, we are here uh, for the third episode of our mental health checkups. And I just get the music going here, just to turn it down just a little bit. Alright. How's everyone doing? We got strawberry, we got ref, elk. Appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, last week we talked about multiple issues from COVID to um, um, to everyone's personal situations. Uh, we talked about my past a little bit growing up um, and two of my favorite streamers. Let's go. There we go. Elk. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we talked about a little bit about my past with uh, living in a single family household. Um, I don't know. A lot of people go, go through, through that. Um, and yeah. So, hey, what's up, Cornwall? And, and senator teal sharks here appreciate all, appreciate all you guys coming in um so this week we're going to tackle um a couple of issues that are going on in today's world um we're going to talk a little bit about covid still because it's good to get different people's perspectives um and we're going to talk about uh some stories that were sent in from people that wanted to stay anonymous so um uh congratulations first time on getting married I know it's been pretty recent. Thank you. Welcome to the yeah. to the husband club. <laughs> yeah, brotherhood of husbands. There we go. So I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this week we've uh, we're just gonna open up with the COVID talk because it's it's obviously a lot of people have opinions on it. Um, in my opinion, we talked about last week. Um, you know, I'm I'm cool with with people making the decision to do what they want to do. Um, my my personal choice is obviously to get vaccinated and wear a mask when when needed but uh it doesn't upset me if um if you decide not to um do you want to open up with any any points of topics that you'd like to talk about in there well i mean i'm i'm right on the same basically the same point as you are you know what i mean like like i i try and not to judge people if they're going to choose not to get vaccinated for whatever reason it is, obviously, especially if it's for a health reason, you know what I mean? There's definitely people, I know people that, uh, you know, for, you know, someone that I know is uh, anaphylactic. So they could go into, uh, you know, anaphylactic shock if they potentially get this vaccination. But that's, I think that's why it's important that other people get it though too. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. that who can get it, I think it's important. And, but I, I agree with you. I respect uh, people's decision, but People also need to understand that just because, uh, you know, that's their beliefs and their decision and their body, that there might be repercussions that come along with that, such as not being allowed into sporting events, because those are privately owned businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, you do have the freedom to make the choices that you want, but so do those companies, right? So, right. And I'm all for uh, vaccinations for public events, personally, but I'm also a vaccinated person, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. All right. Yeah, so... um Mostly, I bring up the COVID thing. Uh, for, first off, Mikey, thank you for the raid. Welcome, guys. Uh, Baxter, Canuck, Jace, Mikey. Um, I, uh, I I brought that up because last, or I think it was last week or the first or two weeks ago. Um, um, COVID obviously has brought on a lot of mental stress onto people, and it's not even just always with the mass or, or vaccinations. It's more, um, how do you keep your family safe, um, and it's brought on a lot of mental stress in my family because, uh, um, you know, we have a one year old almost two and she's been in daycare. And also I've was looking for teaching jobs. And, um, unfortunately the jobs that we're finding were more substitute going from school to school. And, uh, we had to make a decision. Do we want to put my child in, in harm's way every day through the daycare that didn't take precautions as much as I wanted to. And with me going into a different school every day, you know, I'm, you know, my exposure level is pretty high. So we decided that uh, the wife and I talked and it was very emotional because my wife, it was like, I, I noticed then it was really weighing her down. So um, I decided to take the year off, keep my kid out of daycare um, and, uh, and, and stay home. Um, obviously that puts me a year out of teaching, which I didn't, you know, when I first started, I never knew this would be a thing, right? You know, I started my degree three years ago. Um, and then now it's like to the point, it's like, I don't know, being in a school is kind of scary depending on where you're at. So 
um, down in Florida, there were a few teachers that died already. They've only been there a couple weeks, you know, and, and that, that's kind of scary, you know, when, when you read that kind of stuff. So, um, so that, 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 that's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, I know there's other people who have gone through a lot of mental straining from COVID one way or another. Doesn't like you could be on the other spectrum where you don't want to get the vaccine and you could be losing your job because of it. Right. That, that's a huge me me mental barrier. Um, and honestly, I feel for those people, you know, I mean, it's, course. it's still a tough Nobody decision. Job. Right. Yeah. Right. And, it, and unfortunately the whole situation sucks for a lot of people and exactly. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I feel for those pe pe people too. Yeah, yeah. There's that, uh, saying that, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We're all, but we're all in different boats. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we, mm -hmm. you know, we're all in a different situation while it's all affecting us in different ways. You know, it, it's, it's, it's definitely affecting all of us, but it's different for a lot of people and you just have to respect that and, and just be, be as, I think, honestly, this is just my motto in life, basically, but just try and be as kind to people as you can. You know what I mean? All right. That's all you got to do. Yep. All right. So um, before we go any further, um, there will be um, different uh, notifications going across the, the chat. If you live in the United States, there's a crisis helpline if you need help with that. There will be one for Canada, and there's also a suicide hot hotline if you think you're past the point of needing help from someone like us. Um, little disclaimer, we are not professionals in any sort. We are not here to give you advice. We're here to just open up and talk about it. Um, that That's it. We're just two guys that want to uh, spread awareness that, you know, you're not, you might be sitting in your home thinking you're going through these troubles and, and no one else is going through them when really that's not the case. Um, everyone has different issues. Some of them might be a little bit more serious than others, but it doesn't mean that it's not weighing people down. So um, this is a place for you guys to come here and talk. You can pitch in through the chat. You can pitch in anonymously through my Discord or Twitter to send me a message, um, and I'll keep your name out of it. Um, so if that's something you guys want to do, um, you can do either one. There's Discord, and it probably won't work. Oh, wait, hold on. That's my socials. There we go. There's my socials. I got to do the Discord one. But uh, just hit me up there, and then I'll keep your name um, through there. So uh, let me get this here real quick. Forgot to set that one up. Here's the Discord link. You guys can throw that there. So, um... Anonymous came through a friend's stream saying he was thinking about getting checked in for depression. Respect for that is the healthiest thing sometimes. We always say you're not alone. Yep, yep, that, that that's right, too. That's, um, again, for some of you guys who weren't around the first time, um, I got this idea um, through uh, crashing Andrew's stream. He was talking about men mental health and just more of, you know, what he was going through at the time. And... Um, I happened to join his stream within the five minutes he was talking about it. It was a pretty serious conversation. And from there, it made me realize I wasn't as okay as I thought I was, just based on his talking points and, and thinking about it. Um, I then thought about, you know, I know there's a lot of people in that same boat. They might think they're okay, but really, you know, they're going through extra stress, extra stuff that might be weighing them down. And after day by day, that can tear you down a little bit to a cracking point. And we don't really want it to get there. So um, I talked about it with my wife and I felt 10 times better. So I figured, hey, maybe I could do this for you guys, give you guys an outlet. I mean, a lot of you guys I'll never see in real life. I mean, it's just the realistic part of it. Um, it can give you guys a comfort zone to come here and talk without really necessarily having to talk to people around you, even though I do suggest doing it because it is great. But if this is a starting point, then hopefully that's a great starting point that I like to have. So yeah. Um, so yeah, um, if anyone would like to share, now's the time. I'm going to um, let them kind of stack up in the chat a little bit. I am going to go through a story. Um, I will say um, it's a little heavy. Um, it is something that uh, it's, it's somebody who went through anonymously and gave it to us. Um, it is really, it is kind of long, so you're going to have to listen to it. But uh, definitely worth li listening to. So it up here real quick all right 
Unfortunately, it's really small, so I gotta do something about that real quick. All right. Take my drink here. All right, so I'm gonna start it, and then uh, if anyone has any comments, um, please add in comments at any point. And then uh, what I would like for you guys to uh, to do is let me know if you had anything similar when when you were young. Maybe not as hard, but just think of situations in your life when you grew up um, that maybe made you realize that it wasn't the right choice. And and then tell me how did you pull through it, and how did you get out of it? So. We uh rushing up here. All right. So the story goes, when I was three years old, my biological father left my mother with two brothers. I was just born and the other was one. I was taking care of my brothers at a young age, grew into an older soul at a very young age, and I've always known as always known as a happy go lucky kid. My mother made sure we didn't miss out on anything and is my very best friend and one of my only friends in the world. With that being said, she was extremely strict. I dealt with a lot of, a lot as a young child, looking after my brothers, making sure we maintain good marks, performing high level in sports. And then I grew older and I started feeling this depressive void. I remember sitting in my room one day doing homework and out of nowhere I had this thought about committing suicide. I was eight years old. Uh, these thoughts carried on throughout puberty. These thoughts turned into something that, that goes through my head daily and I simply needed an escape. These escapes turned into me slightly polishing off Mickey's at 10 and my first 40 of vodka at 13 years old. So Mickey's is just an alcoholic drink. For people that don't know, um, my parents here in Canada, it's a, it's a basically a small bottle of liquor. Right, right. That's I did have yeah. to ask because I didn't know what that was. But um, yeah. yeah, my parents didn't know. I wore that that I'm fine mask starting at a very young age. When I was 13, I was drinking by myself on a regular basis in my room when everyone was asleep, just hoping that empty, that dark empty feeling went away. At 13, I was offered my first cigarette, which created a second addiction, which was a nicotine habit. I played high-level sports, and I was a pretty big boy, and not one person in the world knew that I was going through. Through the ages of 14 and 16, I continued drinking. The suicidal thoughts got realer and realer, bigger and bigger every day. I was truly just trying to silently, silently kill myself. Fast forward to me being 17, I was playing at a high level of hockey with guys four or five years older than I was. At 17, the night um, at 17, the night of, of a party, I was already 15 to 20 drinks in. I was introduced to Coke and became hooked. My depression got worse, and I was partying all the time in hopes that I might just die. After that year, I fell into a crippling depression. I gained 120 pounds, and I weighed around 300 pounds. I was eating, drinking, smoking, doing other drugs all by myself on my own in my room for one year. I don't think I left the house to do anything other than to feed my addiction. My mother obviously concerned about my well-being as her happy-go-lucky son turned into this person that she couldn't even recognize. Uh, one night she called me and that she was coming home to pick me up to have a conversation with her. While she was on the phone with me, I was trying to take my own life. Um, I taped a green garbage bag around my neck and swallowed a handful of my stepfather's sleeping pills. My brother knocked on the door and essentially saved my life as I was almost passed out. I ripped the garbage bag off my head and carried on with my evening as if nothing ever happened. Two weeks before my 20th birthday, my aunt OD'd and died. My mom and my aunt weren't close whatsoever, but the way my mom reacted to her death, I made a promise to to myself that I would never attempt to take my life again. I still remember the day like it was yesterday. I kicked the, cone, uh, the cocaine addiction, cold turkey, the drinking reduced tremendously, and not one person at this point ever knew. Between the ages of 20 and 22, I became dependent on weed. I told myself I couldn't get addicted to that. Well, guess what? I was high 24 seven. I couldn't hold a job. I couldn't maintain friendships. I did end up going 
from 300 pounds to 180 pounds over summertime. I worked off my weight by going to the gym, eating right, however, I still couldn't function. Now today at 23 years old, I've been the most sober I've ever been. I'm currently going through extensive therapy as well as rehab. And guess what I wanted to I guess what I wanted to say is that life does get better. Hope or help is available. Talking to others is a must. Normalize talking about mental health. And um, that is the only way to start making change. So he wanted to go through his experiences starting at a young age to current day. And just wanted to share your story about how it can get better, even though it might seem like it may never. Um, any comments on that, Tyma? I mean, it's it, it's crazy to think about that. Like, that's the majority of his life. That's the majority of that person's life. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, because it started at such a young age. So um, I, I think to see optimism and hope from a story like that is really important because it shows that you can, you know, overcome going through those types of feelings for a long time. And I think it's like they said that at the end, you know, it's really important that you, you talk to people, you got to learn to talk to people about it. And when I was younger, I mean, I'm really impressed by that person's, you know, they say they're 23 now. Um, like I said, it's so much to go through in such a short period, well, a long period of time, but a short period of time compared to say someone who's you know, in their forties or older. Right. And, um, it, it's just, uh, it, it's it, that type of thing changes you a lot. And I'm really impressed by that person's resilience. And, um, I just can't imagine what strong of a person that they're going to be and that they already are. Like they said, they were an old soul from a young age. They're forced to grow up early. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I just can't imagine how, how mature that person must be, but in the same respect, I hope that they get to get lose a little bit of that maturity you know what i mean having stuff like that going on at a young age would steal your childhood you know what i mean that deprives you of that childhood and a lot of joy in your early years of development which uh you know i'm sure were really tough you know that's uh it's quite the story and i i know a lot of people too uh myself that uh i've struggled with drug abuse i have a friend right now who struggles with a cocaine addiction and uh all we can do as friends is we try to be there for him and the best ways we can and telling him that you know we support his his decisions towards sobriety if he ever chooses to go down that road we tell him we were there to talk to him anytime he needs it you know um it, it, he's been he's been down an interesting road himself and uh you know it's uh it, hearing a story like we just heard it definitely gives me hope that you know even though somebody may have been going through something for <laughs> the majority of their life that they can they can turn it around right it's you know, and I'm sure they're still struggle. They're going to struggle for the rest of their life with those types of feelings and, and, uh, hopefully, you know, battling those addictions and, you know, seeming to put those demons at bay, uh, helps with that. But yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's a moving story for sure. Just like I said, like, man, to go through that at such a young age for so long and now to be feeling like they're the best they've been feeling in a long time is, is super uplifting. So yeah, I'm glad they shared. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, just the, uh, bravery to share that story one um, is a big deal because I mean they didn't put their name out here but they put their name out to me which you know they didn't have to and I appreciate them sharing because hopefully somebody can uh, relate to it a little bit even if it's not as serious you know there's still some connections like I can say um, you know like our my dad left me when I was you know in my family when I was 10 years old and I had to raise my sister so like I could have easily have went down that same path, you know, and, um, granted my life was a little different. Um, I, I had, um, there was addictions around me that made me realize that I don't want to do that, but maybe he wasn't yeah. afforded the same opportunity. So, um, you know, so like everyone's situation is different, but there's still things you can relate to in his story. If you went through similar situations and make you realize how lucky either you could have had it or, um, yeah, so if anyone has had any kind of situation like, like this um, at any point in their life, if they were younger, and a lot of a lot of people can get addicted to cigarettes at a young age by peer pressure. I know that's always a big talk when you're in high school and stuff. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, but I mean, you could always pull through on, through on the other side. You know, there's always someone there to help you. You just have to be willing to um, look for it. Right. And it looks like he finally 
decided to look for it and and i'm glad to hear that he's doing better and hopefully he turns the corner of never returning to that that old life so um yeah it's a lot of fortitude to carry a burden the way they did for that long and and that's that's again that's that that guy went through a lot of trauma at a very young age at all the way to current day you know and that's like a lifetime that you could go through um you know and and i actually have known people um running a hockey league i've like in in real life i i've unfortunately have run into some people that have gotten into drug drug trouble and um you know and some of them don't do well and other like there's someone i know that uh went through trouble for a long time and now he's in the past year he got out of rehab um now i'm not very religious to say the sorts but he's turned to the church and it seems like that has really uplifted him and i think that's more where i think that's a really good thing you know and, and i think that's what the church should should be doing is uplifting people that 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 need help and and he definitely needed it so um i'm really happy to see all of his posts about um whatever his uh his mission is for that day and and he's he's always seeming to be a lot happier and um and it's really really nice to see um but uh yeah i've, I've never been into drugs I, I didn't even try i never tried cigarettes didn't even start drinking until i was 21 because i just had no interest because it was again around me all the time and i just had no interest but uh again not everyone's afforded that same situation and i know a lot of people who've gone through some pretty tough stuff so um that was the one anonymous thing that uh right and that's what i was trying to say there strabber i might not have said it as as nice as, as you said it uh regardless of anyone's religious beliefs faith can be a powerful force and it can be for a lot of people who um who are in need right so um yeah i don't really have too much else other than things that we've already talked about um the one thing on a lighter note um because Timo did get married there's a lot of people who um have gone kind of switching gears to a much lighter note like i said um go through a lot of stress male or female of uh planning a wedding um and i know my wife went through it i know uh i'm sure your wife probably went through some <laughs> there's always something <laughs> something that, that 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 happens um how did you guys uh, do as far as planning and and going through 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 your big day? Yeah, I mean, uh, it kind of goes back to even what we were talking about earlier with COVID because initially when we had planned our wedding, we uh, you know we weren't expecting COVID, <laughs> so it, <laughs> it pushed everything back for us for a year, and then we had some really tough decisions to make in terms of having less people at the wedding. We had to cut seventy five guests, so we were able to eventually you know put together a day that did include a lot of those people that wouldn't be able to attend the reception but uh um yeah there was definitely a lot of stress related to that just in terms of having to reschedule things but also more the fact of like you know having to come to terms with the fact that people weren't going to be able to make it and that we were going to have to tell those people that and how they would feel about it and you know things like that situations like that can get touchy with family members and ultimately at the end of the day i think what's most important is just you know being open and honest with people and uh you know we, we didn't have a lot of uh negative feedback over having to cut people there were some people that were you know unfortunately they wanted to be there of course it was we wanted them to be there um but you know like uh, i think communication's key um even for me and my wife now you know um before we got married uh you know we, we've always been strong on that and obviously mm -hmm. that's a value that we're going to carry uh throughout our marriage is that you know communication is key and we you know we, we are afforded the uh the nice uh i guess the ability to not argue very often her and i like we'll have our small arguments but we don't really get in large fights and i think uh that can be attributed to the fact that we do communicate a lot and try to be open and honest and like you were even what you touched on earlier like being open with your wife if about some of your struggles once you realize that that was something you were going through you know her and i, I have I've done the same thing and you know we we lost circa last uh last year not this february but this february before and that was right as covid was starting and stuff and that's really when i started you know starting to struggle with depression and whatnot again uh a little bit of anxiety and whatnot too and it, it had 
been something that I had struggled with quite a bit when I was younger. Um, and, and it, it's like you said, it's really important to talk about it because when I was younger, I didn't do that. And I'm not sure if that, that ability to do that and open up just came with time and maturity or if it was more like, you, you know, things like this where you see people opening up and talking about it, people that you know and are people you respect and, you know, being open and honest. I, I do think, you know, streams like this and, you know, shows like this or anything like this is important because that's what it does. It allows maybe not even necessarily younger people, but people in general to know that like there might be some solace in knowing that someone's going through something like you are. Um, and hopefully that can help you open up. But it's also like Crash said last week on this show that, you know, what works for me might not work for you. And ultimately at the end of the day, you know, if you're feeling dark feelings or, or just a lot of negativity in your life and, and you feel like it's weighing you down, well, it's probably best to go speak with a professional, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, even if you don't feel like maybe it's at that point yet, but there's there's just so many things that are different for different people. Obviously, I, I would advocate, uh, you know, having, trying to be physically active, you know, do even, I got into um, some, some breathing meditation recently. You know, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different healthy avenues that you can take, but at the end of the day, that might not work for everyone. So, you know, um, obviously you, can do your research but you're not an expert at the end of the day and nor are we like right. you said in this this is the disclaimer at the beginning you know it's important to know that you know we are not experts you're not an expert and um you know don't don't uh you got to take things seriously especially when it comes to your mental health because negativity breeds negativity and at the end of the day that's stress and stress turns to poor health and you know it's a deeper it's a deeper thing than just your mental health your mental health affects everything else so it's uh it's pretty broad what it what mental health touches right so, right and in both a positive manner and a negative manner so, so it's important that you stay on top of it and learn to recognize the signs and, and um learn to recognize what works for you and what doesn't work for you too yeah. i had gone on uh i when i was struggling with uh i had post concussion syndrome for about two years mm -hmm. and uh that came along with daily headaches and cognitive issues, balance issues, and it was it, pretty depressing. I'm not gonna lie. And one of the th things that they put me on for it was they put me on an antidepressant. And personally, I didn't feel like it worked very well for me. I gave it a shot because it was what was prescribed by my doctor. But for me, that didn't really do the trick. It's more like the natural path that seems to work for me. Um, but the trouble with that is you have to motivate yourself to do it too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're feeling these feelings, like you don't, you're not motivated to do those types of things. So it's, uh, you know, it can be, it's, it's always a struggle, no matter what uh, you're going through, whether that's, like I said, anxiety or depression or whatever else it might be, you know, it's, uh, it's always going to be a struggle and different things are going to work for different people. And like Crash said last week, it's just important to know that uh, if you need to, you can go see someone, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be be ashamed about it i think we're i think we're getting to a point now where people are realizing this is not something to be ashamed of and because there was a lot of stigma negative 100%. stigma towards your your mental health and i'm really glad that things are opening up and you know because it's it's important it's very, very important so right especially i mean i'm sure it's similar in canada too but like there's always the stigma and in america where you know the guy's got to be mentally strong and not show emotion and blah 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 and 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 that's all you know that's just all crap you know you know everyone toxic masculinity right it's and toxic it, masculinity yeah like yeah. everyone has emotions um if you're a big buff dude yep. or not you know and yep. um you know, hot, you know masking them is just burying them deeper and deeper and it just piles up yep. and then eventually you're gonna crack yep. you know um exactly yeah, jocks need help too. That's right. <laughs> but like, I mean, and, and I was always brought up like that too, because my my uh, family was a military family, so we traveled around a lot. Um, military families, you know, are usually pretty, you know, mentally tough or whatever. But I mean, how many of those guys go through PTSD because of the situations they've been in? Because they pile everything inside, you know. And I'm not saying that's the main source of it. Obviously, the main source of it is the situations they're put in, but. I mean, it's not helping them, you know, so talking exactly. to people is, is, uh, is definitely the way to go. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I brought up the wedding thing cause, uh, um, 
I don't know if I talked about this last week or not, but during our situation, we were getting married. Um, we planned it for about a year. Um, we had about 250 people. Uh, we, we had to cut some people out um, just because, like, I run a hockey rink, so it was just kind of like, like, yeah. everyone at the hockey rink kind of comes and whatever. But, because, um, like, I, I have one my like my main family didn't come because all of the like, i don't talk to many people from my family but my my wife's family is very large so i invited hockey guys <laughs> but uh um it started out with uh we we really wanted a cat but we weren't uh wanting one until after we got back from our honeymoon and we were put in a situation two months before we got married to where there was this little baby kitten that was found on someone's doorstep with a bunch of other kittens that didn't make it and this person moved into this house with this box of cats on his door um so he tried to find someone and ultimately i took him and uh or took her and she was like this big and i was bottle feeding her and it was every two hours i had to wake up to feed this cat um so that just added to a little bit of stress not a big deal but it still adds to it because it's now all of a sudden we're worrying about something we're not we weren't yeah, and it ended up being Larkin, which you guys have all seen, um, and uh, and <laughs> and yeah. So uh, there's that. But then the biggest thing that we had to go through was um, a very scary time, which I've talked about. I think the first week um, when my when my wife left for work a month before our wedding, um, and yeah, I, I was talk talk talking about uh, Larkin. Um, all right, when my wife was leaving for, for work, um, not even five minutes after she left, she calls me screaming and crying. And here, somebody ran straight straight into her car, uh, fell asleep at a stoplight, and went right through it and just ran straight 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 on. I was trying to find the pic pic picture of the car, but it was total it was totaled. Um, the whole that's front definitely. end was like smashed in. She was stuck in the car, and literally I could walk oh, there. Man. Like that's how far away she was. Um, and this was a month before our wedding. And she couldn't get out of the car. She was pinned in there. She didn't know if it was because she couldn't move or because of the car. Because um, it was just more shock than anything. Um, and, you know, that, that that right there put us a lot more stress into the situation. Um, one, not not just emotionally, but financially. Like, she just paid off yep. the car. Um, you know, that was her first month of not paying for it. And then now we had to go out and buy another car. <laughs> um, on yep. top of a well, wedding. Even just like the... I imagine just the stress of like living through that. You right. I mean? Right. Well, yeah. And then, and then the emotional part of just being in that situation, she doesn't want to drive hardly ever anymore. Um, even to this day, like I, I drive most places now she will, but like if it's nighttime, yeah. I know that she's not going to drive. Like, and, I, and, I, and yeah. never, I'll never ask her to, even though this no, didn't happen I mean, at night, but it's just, that. right. So, yeah. um, like we just drove down to South Carolina's 11 hour drive. I drove all, but like the last hundred miles of it um which was a very hard burden for me because i tend to get very tired while driving <laughs> but yeah, yeah I can, but i did I well really... but um but yeah it's it's just one of those things like you know everyone goes through stress um um is that the same as survivor's guilt um i don't know i i don't think it is if i'm thinking of the right thing but uh i think she's just more nervous because she's she overwatches people riding on the line and she thinks that they're coming at her so she gets a little bit more defensive in her car than she probably should be which in turn might make it more dangerous to be driving because she's a little bit more defensive when it comes to that kind of stuff um i haven't been to, i've never been in an accident so i don't know what it's the only time I was, I hit a parked car that was my mom's, um, and that was just my dumb fault. So I don't have any of those um, situations where it puts um, that, uh, I don't ever relive that where she has had, to, or she has relived that a couple times. Um, the only thing I, I've had to do with cars is I've had concussions too. Like, like you said, I used to get migraines like crazy, um, and the thing that still affects me to this day is uh bright, bright bright lights um and anytime i stare at lights for a long time i can't have lights in front of me especially when i'm streaming um because it burns an image in it, in it, in it, or it burns uh like a like the light will stay in like the center of my vision and then i can't see in the center and then i 
you know, I have to wait a while till it goes away. Um, that's something that still happens to this day. It's been like 20 years. Um, Peace. so I don't like driving at night too, but you know, I'll do it. <laughs> um, yeah. let's see. Strawberry said as someone who's been in a car accident, it's scary. Mine was seven years ago. I still remember that day vividly. I know. It, and, and that's what I mean. Like, I'm sure if I w- went through something, um, that's that's scary stuff. Like I've always thought about it, right? I've seen bad car accidents. Um, yep. Never want to be in one. I, that, no. that, that's for sure. Terry I, was just in one. I was gonna Terry just, just had his car totaled. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say Terry. Like his car looked exactly like my wife's car, but the he person went ahead. Five. Yeah, that's that's uh. He's got a he's got a magnet on his car. Drives his... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um. Like his car looked exactly like it, but he went into someone where they went. My wife was like stuck. She just saw this car coming at her and she couldn't move because she was stopped. Um, you know, so like either way, I mean, like Terry um, opened up to me and, you know, he said, just make sure you tell people you love them. And, and, you know, cause I couldn't, uh, there may have been a chance I wasn't here today, you know, and, and that's very good advice for someone who's been in a situation like that. Maybe kind of realized that it could be, over at any point because of something that's even out of your control, you know, just like a yep. car accident. So make sure you guys go tell your people you love them. You know, you never make, make sure you never leave mad. Uh, something my wife and I go through every night is, um, never go to bed mad, go to bed mad. It's, yep. it's, it's not good. Go to bed angry. Right. You just get... stews and boils and right. Yeah. That's why um, I said communication is key. You know, you gotta, yeah, and that's the same as like communicating that you love people too. You know what right. I mean? And, yeah, yeah. I've been with my wife important. for seven years now. Seven. Yeah, same eight. with me and mine. So. Right, and I don't think we've ever had an argument. We've had disagreements, like you know, I, like you're you're you seem to be the same as me and mine. That right. because that's the same way we are. And I think I, I like I said, I think that's a big. Uh, we owe it to the communication factor, right? right. So. Yeah, like every little yeah. thing I and I could tell when something's bothering her, so I just make her spit oh, it out. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I can yeah. read her like like a book. Cause she doesn't lie. Yeah. Like she, she, she can't lie, which is like the best thing. So, just, yep. so if I call her out on it. She... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, and that's also the thing, like, like I can't break that trust, you know? Um, yeah. I did do something stupid and one at one point and I bought a computer behind her back and she's a tax person. So when she went to go do my taxes, is there anything you bought for your stream? that we could put off his writing off. And I'm like, well, there is this one thing. <laughs> and I mean, I, I did tell her, but I did break that trust, you know, and, and, and I, yeah. after I realized what I did, I felt terrible and I make sure that yeah. that'll never have, ha, 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 happen well, again. Exactly. You, you, then that's the, that's the thing, right? There's a lot of people that, um, that don't take the right lessons from, from maybe not faults, but situations that they've been in before. And I think that's mm-hmm. really important because obviously when, when you do something and you feel bad about it, you know, you got, you've got two routes you can go down. You can either go down the one route where you don't change at all. And, you know, or, or you can go down the other route where you change yourself for the better. And, you know, you, you learn from that mistake. Right. So yeah. Cause, I, I think that's important. Cause I, I never thought about it like this. Cause she was, she, uh, yeah, cause it's like an honest thing. It's like, you know, it was the money I made from streaming. It wasn't like a big deal. Right. But I, I, yeah. but then on her perspective, it was, you went behind my back, hit it from me. How do I know this is the only thing you're doing? You know? And yep. then I realized it's like, oh crap, maybe, maybe I didn't look at it that, that way. So make sure you exactly. always think of the other perspective when you're making stupid purchases or <laughs> making stupid decisions, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as much as it didn't harm us in any way, it doesn't mean it didn't harm our relationship at all, which it did. So, um, yeah, and 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 elk, and that's that's the thing, man. It's like that. That's how that builds up. Like it, that little thing could have built up to something else, and to something else, and something else, and then all of a sudden, there's no more trust there, and our marriage is ruined. Like, and is it was that worth it? You know, for a computer? No, yeah. not at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I I, I would never want to hurt her in any way, and I realized I did. You know, and then that's yeah. when I was like, damn, um, mistakes yeah, do happen. That's a bad feeling part of humanity but learning from the best thing you you can do yeah and you know obviously the trust is built back up again but uh yeah i i realize never again <laughs> net, 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 never again but uh 
Yeah, Elk, um, is there anything you want to share, bud? I know you've uh, talked to me be before about some stuff. Um, it's up to you if you want to share. If not, we can, we can do it anonymously a different day. Um, let's see here. I was going to try to bring up one more thing from mine. What's up, Exclusive? How are we doing, buddy? I'm at a point with Baby Mama. It's just... It's all too much after a long time. Yeah, and see, that's a situation that, again, my friends have been in, but I haven't been in myself. So I see it from like a third person perspective where they have a child with someone else that they're no longer with and the person they had the child with and then don't have a good relationship with each other. Um, and it's tough, you know, like for whatever reason that they broke up or they were never really together to begin with. Um, you know, it's it, it, it's hard to watch because the person who suffers the most um, is a uh, is is the children, right? Because the only Literally. reason why <laughs> the only reason why you're talking is because of the child, um, you know, and that that does tear down after a while, and you don't want the kid to like really suffer in any aspect from one way or another, because two adults are arguing over something that has nothing to do with them. Um, you know, and, and that's stuff that I've seen with some friends, like say, Oh, I can't stand this person or that person, but some of them are adult enough to work it out, especially in front of the kids. But then there's other people who don't, and I've seen that too. And, and, and it's very, uh, all right, let's read what Elvis said. Like, I'm scared of her. I shouldn't trust her, but I promise to love her forever. And that's my boy's mom. I've been sitting here all stream wishing I could fix it, but can I? Um, and that's the thing, man. Like, it's... It's not always fixable, you know? Sometimes it just doesn't work. Also, the definition of love can change, too. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if it changes, you know what I mean? Yes, you promise to love her forever, but you know what I mean? It might not be healthy, the type of love that you have now, and that love needs to change into a love for... The mother of your child as opposed to the love for your partner you know what i mean and i know that's a really hard thing to deal with especially when you know you have a child involved and i'm not a father but um you know i do have friends that that have children and um you know it's even like in in the topic of like splitting up or divorce whatever you want to say like i really do think that my my wife um her her mother did an incredible job with that um you know, my wife, uh, she, her father was, was an alcoholic ultimately. And, uh, his issues drove the rest of the family away from him. And no matter what, um, her mother always did a really good job of making sure that she was still able to safely see her father and maintain that relationship, even through a young age. And, uh, I think I just give her all the credit in the world for that, because I know it's a really hard thing when, you know, you have extreme differences with someone especially when it was passionate at one point there's always still going to be some residual passion of some kind there whether it turns into an angry passion over say a, a positive passion you know it, that's still there and uh you know i i can tell you that like my parents got divorced when i was in uh, my late 20s and they still like they made it difficult they made it difficult on us kids and my sister was uh, a young teenager at the time and i tried my best to keep her out of the way but ultimately you can't control what people do and i gave my parents good advice but they still you know like that's why i give my my wife's mom so much credit because it's i can't imagine how incredibly tough that is to do like elk you're saying that you know you're scared of her and but you feel like you owe her this this ever everlasting love but like i said it's okay to realize that that love can change to something else like i said for her being the love for your for the mother of your child right and ultimately you have to do what's best for your child mm -hmm. and uh you know like i said i can't speak to being a father but I, I just i know that it takes an incredible amount of strength to go through what you're going through and i give you credit for for doing what you're doing you know you're doing you're trying to do what's best for your son or your child and that's that's what's important and don't forget that and i know you won't so yeah yeah, I, I, yeah it's tough there's a difference between loving someone and being in love with someone um yeah. you can love someone and care about what happens to them doesn't mean you have to be in love with them 
Um, yeah, um, what's, what's up, Spud? Um, the one thing I wanted to say about that, and I'm not talking necessarily about your situation, because I have seen some stuff that you showed me be behind the scenes, but ultimately, the only thing... There's two things you, sh you, you should worry about and care about the most. What happens with, with, your, with your kid and what happens with you. Care about those two things the most. Honestly, I mean, I know she has two kids that call you dead too, but when it comes down to it, man, it's, you got to worry about the, about the two of you the most. And I know it might hurt and it's, it's deep down, you know, but in the long run, she's destroying you, man. And it's, it's not, it's not healthy. It's, it, it's, it's really not. And you can't force someone to, to, to love you. That's just how it is, you know? And hopefully one day she sees that you know you were a good person and all that stuff but when it comes down to it man like you need to worry about your kid and yourself and start start from 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 there uh, use those two as your priorities and all your decisions with this person you know if it doesn't improve the two of you then i don't know take a step back and reevaluate that's all i can really say jenja cornwall what's up guys um yeah, so I know that that was a pretty big topic this week with people me messaging me too. Those were the two things that uh, really hit home. Jinja, I know you're going through some stuff too. Uh, we kind of lightly talked about it in the beginning. Um, did my stream just crash? I think so. Awesome. I hope not, but... Mm. I'm losing train. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's We're back, back, guys. We're it's back! back. We're back. <laughs> Um, JJ, uh, I, I was saying, uh, um, we lately talked about, uh, some, some stuff, um, with, uh, COVID and, you know, how it doesn't matter which side you are, a vaccine or not, everyone has stress with it. And I know kind of you're, you're on the other side of the fence with us, which, you know, I'm totally fine with too, but you're. Um, you've been open about it that you're in a situation that uh, um, you could lose your job if you. I saw or, that on Twitter. Yeah, or it's or a tough spot. Or do something that you don't want to do, and and in that situation, I feel for you. You shouldn't have to be in a situation like that, um, and no one should. Um, even though I believe in the vaccine and all that other stuff, and you know, it's a tough position, and I'm sorry that that you have to go through through that. You're not the only one, and I know. At my mom's work, she works at a hospital. They're forcing everyone, um, not only just the nurses and everyone who works at the hospital, they're getting like another wing built. All the construction workers have to do it. And when they, there's actually a lawsuit going on now because they signed the contract before COVID even started and this wasn't part of the contract and now they're changing that. So like there's other things with that, with that too. Um, you know, and it's again, a tough position for everyone, you know, um, one way or another. And you know, sorry, you have to go through through that. Hopefully, it all turns out in the best, and um, nothing suffers one way or another. So, uh, um, anyone else have anything to bring up before uh, give you guys? I'm gonna we're gonna go uh, be right back just for a couple minutes. I'll let you guys throw some stuff in the chat, and then if not, we'll uh, sign off and go from there. So, guys, we will be back in just. A moment.
All right, guys, we are back. Um, just had to touch up our drinks here. Um, Elk says, I sort of had a topic. I was wondering if you covered any sports mental health stories. We did touch a little bit on one, but uh, we'll have Tymo kind of dive deep, deeper in it here. Yeah, Elk, um, basically, I mean, I, I never really played competitive sports or anything like that. Um, just uh, some organized hockey, basically, in my later year, like later early 20s, I would say, because I got started with hockey pretty late. Um, obviously, you know, being from Thunder Bay, there was a lot of pond hockey, a lot of outdoor rinks and whatnot, but I never played, you know, competitive hockey at any any level. So I didn't know how to take a hit, that's for sure. And I was playing non-contact hockey, so I was told. Uh, and I got my first concussion from being basically uh, cross check from behind, going for a puck uh, down behind the net. And wasn't prepared for it. I'm not even sure if I had played competitive hockey at any level, if I would have been prepared for that, but uh, didn't really brace for it and went headfirst into the boards. And that started, uh, you know, a, a two year long issue where basically I was struggling with post-concussion syndrome and wasn't really sure that that was the case at the time either because they had found uh, a cyst and a uh, pineal cyst uh, near the pineal gland in my, in my brain uh, when this was all going on because of the testing that I had about a bunch of MRIs and CT scans and stuff. So um, that actually ended up adding some stress to the situation too, obviously, but uh, you know, gener just genuinely feeling uh, the way I explained it was almost kind of like waking up the next day and still feeling like drunk. If you had been drinking a night or like, you know, a bad, really bad hangover, that's kind of what it always felt like. And it's just a feeling that never went away. And over time that just kind of beat me down and, led to some depressive thoughts obviously and um you know it's and i i know i know that you you said more of like you know sports health topic but i think this is probably something that a lot of players struggle with because we know that there's a large prevalency in contact sports of concussions and cte and repeated repeated concussions will lead to cte over time we're finding out which you know a lot of the symptoms of cte are very very heavily related to your mental health so it's uh it's a scary thought and just you know you know i think there's probably a lot of people that grow up in in canada playing hockey and go through these same things and maybe you know that the whole mentality with in sports and especially in hockey it's like get back out there right mm -hmm. and um you know i i know that a lot of the professional athletes you know do that to themselves because they just have such a high compete level but uh it, it truly is scary to see what it can do to people in the long term. And like you, the story about Johan Franz and from a couple of years ago, I don't know if you read that story, but mm -hmm. Holy cow. Like, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's truly, yeah, it's, it's scary. It's scary. And uh, you got to take it seriously. And I hope that, you know, in terms of concussions, I hope that I think the league's making the proper steps. I just wish that they would protect players a little bit more in these scenarios when something you know, egregious is happening, such as Panarin being slammed on the ice last year, almost straight on his head. You know, like I think they really need to crack down on situations like that. Cause obviously I, I don't think we're in a situation where they're going to take hitting out of the game or anything, but maybe eventually, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, and would that be the end of the world? I think there's a lot of purists who'd say it would be, but you'd still see some great hockey, you know what I mean? But okay. yeah, I just, I, I hope that, you know, teams and players take it more seriously. Cause like I said, I think a lot of the times it is the players themselves that have such a high compete level that they want to get back out there. They don't want to be on the bench. Right. So mm -hmm. it's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's that's serious though. Yeah. And I mean, you speak about professional sports, but I, I mean, it's where it really needs to start being looked at, I think is uh, youth sports, um, especially at, you know, high competitive um levels of, of youth going all the way through high school um travel hockey like you know even if you're like one of the better kids and you're more dependent on these coaches ha have a responsibility to protect the children um at all yeah. costs and unfortunately 80s 90s even mid 2000s concussions weren't really a big issue of topic and it was oh you can stand on your feet get back out there go score some goals and they would, yeah. and they would get hit again, and it would put them in more danger, and more danger. Well, like Paul Korea, <laughs> right? That was right. horrific. Yeah, he, he was went back out there and scored. It was like, right. oh my god! Right, he was he was so... literally like dead on the ice, like he wasn't breathing. Yeah. 
you know, and I actually watched that game and I was like, that yeah, guy's dead. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he went back out there and he should never have been out there. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, with these sports coaches have a responsibility to protect the kids and a lot of them don't because they're in the moment of, I have to win this game and it's sad. Yeah. And now I think we are turning a curve where more people are conscious of, of the idea of concussions and what, it, what that situation is like. Um, but, uh, unfortunately a lot of people have their careers shortened in, in sports one, uh, be, be, because of that. And two go through a lot of mental issues later on in life because again they have cognitive issues and it frustrates them it puts them in a depressive state um just stuff like that like and it really you don't feel it it's just something that happens right um the only time i felt my concussion is when i had migraines but there was other things that were bothering me like you know like like the lights and stuff like i like i said i still deal with that today you know um yeah and that's something that affects like like I can't even sit in my living room with with the light on that my wife likes because it's in front of us. Really, I have to wear yeah. a hat so it, it's the light above us. I have to wear a hat yeah. so it blocks down, or else it's just like um, it's just this big glare going across across my my vision. And I can't see see the TV, and then I get headaches. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's still to this day. It's just I'm super sensitive to to light. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, uh, let's see what the senator said here. Father never let me play hockey because he was scared I would get concussions since I was super skinny. And that's that's a thing, too. A lot of people are taking more precautions, especially with football being in the United States. A lot of parents are pulling their kids out of football because there's all these studies that concussion problems start during the development of their brain, during elementary football all the way through. Which is not know? surprising. No, it's you not surprising I mean? at all. Yeah. You know? Anytime you take the human brain and, and you, you know, slam it at a stop, right. it, it's going to bounce off the wall of your skull and that's how it starts you know right. so and if it happens yeah. before the brain's fully developed you can do some serious da damage you know um yeah, especially because you can do serious damage either way you right. know even if your brain is fully developed right mm -hmm. so it's scary to think what it can do to an undeveloped brain you right know, or not a fully developed anyways yeah but yeah, that's a scary thought yeah um let's see other mental health issues with sports um Let's see. I talked last week how sports helped me men men mentally. Um, yeah. I'll kind of touch light on that a little bit more if you missed it the last time. Um, I was in line. I was engaged and living with my fiance at the time, and we mutually broke it off. There's no hard feelings. But uh, when I moved back home, uh, which was back to my to Pennsylvania, we weren't living in Pennsylvania at the time. Um, I decided to, well, it wasn't all my decision, but a lot of the friends went her way. So I was kind of stuck with no job, no friends, um, and nothing really going for me. I just kind of started over life. Um, so after a while, it kind of wore me down. Um, as much as I think video games can help people, this was not one of those situations. I, I feel like I abused video games too much, and it in turn made me gain weight um, it ruined all my sleeping schedules, um, and after about six months, I, I realized I was depressed, which is, um, you know, hard to realize, and, and I realized after getting out one time playing hockey, I, I realized, like, man, I am not myself, this is not me, um, so I went out and got, like, a really part-time job just to pay for gas to get to hockey, um, and that's pretty much all, like, it was six hours a week is all I could find at the time. But it got me to hockey and back because it was 40 minutes away. Um, and then I ended up opening... I played hockey at this rink before. And me and this one guy weren't really fond of each other at the time. Um, I opened the bridge... Or I um, extended my, my hand to uh, see if he, he wanted to play with me at this other league. And I was surprised that he said yes. And we ended up becoming really good friends. Um, he ended up being in my wedding party. Um, and I mean, we always joke about how and he's a bigger dude too. Right. So I wouldn't mess with him anyway, but, um, you know, he always, for some reason, just didn't like, I wasn't a part of his group. And back then there, he even admits that they were super immature and had their little click and it was stupid, but they were young kids. Right. So, um, 
so it was just one of those things like, you know, I, I, I took a step in trying to mend that relationship. And, uh, and to this day, I run the league now and he helps me. Um, nice. And, and it's one of those things like I used hockey to get out of my depression. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying it's that easy for everyone. Um, I was fortunate enough to even notice I was depressed. Not a lot of people do. Um, but I, I did go through some dark times to get to that point. Um, you know, just, you know, just being by myself way too much. Um, right now, I'm fortunate enough that even through COVID, I have my daughter here and my wife. Um, not everyone has that, again, that luxury. Sometimes you are by yourself and you just have to put yourself in position to not fall down that, that hole of depression and make yourself available to, 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 to change if, if the situation is there, um, yeah. Have it be and I guess learn or... to recognize the signs too. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's important as well. Cause like you said, you were thankful enough and lucky enough to realize that that's the way things were going. Right. Mm -hmm. But for some people, like, especially like who knows how long you've been going through something like that and you go through it long enough, that just becomes normal. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to really realize that, Hey, this is a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, I shouldn't be feeling this way. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. yeah. A lot of people can use uh, use the weight room or just buying some weights, like using that that dark energy in your life and, and turn it into a positive. Um, yep. Knock two birds out with one stone. Get some muscle while, while you're doing it and burn, burn, burn yeah. some fat. And well, some... And releasing endorphins. You know, mm -hmm. every time you're working out, your brain's releasing those endorphins. So, you know, there's, <laughs> I, there's <laughs> reasons why physical activity is good for your mental health you know what i mean besides looking good and feeling good because there's right. always that adage too right look good feel good so my my one friend who went through a depressive state as a young age uh was a troubled kid um didn't see him for a couple of years came back to the hockey rink and he was jacked and he said it was all because he just needed a change of life and and in lifestyle so he picked up some weights and just did that and and then now he's living a very healthy life with now his wife and he has some kids and um you know so it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a sport per se but just changing something in your life to make you happier um yep. it could be just be going out for walks at the park get outside a little bit um go yep. take some hikes at a, on a trail um go to a mall and just watch people walk around sometimes that's funny you know? yeah um yeah you know? and, and you know what to, to walking through, you know, going down a trail, like there, it's been scientifically proven that two hours in nature a week, if you can, in some manner is, uh, will greatly improve your mental health. So, you know, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, if, uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I mean, thank you for having me. Thank you yeah. for doing this. Um, you know, obviously there's a, there's a, I think there's more and more of us within this, this niche NHL community that, um, I mean, I think that's where we all kind of started anyways. You know, a lot of us are branching out now into different realms, but I do think it's really positive to see that a lot of people within this, you know, community have been outspoken about their struggles and are trying to be advocates for, um, maintaining, good mental health and or working with your poor mental health and i just yeah i think things like this like what you're doing here uh and what say teal shark does you know uh i think it's really important and even just like i've tried to use my own stream at times when i can uh i will not shy away from talking about subjects like this i know a lot of streamers tend to uh shy away from subjects that are heavier so to say just because it can bring down your chat but Ultimately, you know, um, I think we have to normalize talking about your mental health. And uh, the more we do, uh, the less that stigma goes away. And I already think it's, it's you know, dissipated a lot since I left high school, which would be, geez, <laughs> too long ago now. 20, mm -hmm. I don't know, too long. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I just think it's positive and that, you know, a lot of people like yourself are, are making these big steps to, you know, make people realize that it's important to focus on your mental health and mm -hmm. it's okay to talk about it, you know? Yeah, hopefully uh, some viewers have gained some insight on other people in the chat. Um, hopefully you guys have made some connections with one another, um, knowing that you guys are going through something similar, even if the situation is not exactly the same. Um, 
And again, I appreciate Thymo coming on. I wanted to get you on here pretty early because you have been an advocate for mental health. Um, So uh, if you guys don't know Thymo, there's uh, there's his Twitter and his Twitch. Make sure you guys go give him a follow um he's uh live usually in the mornings um i think it's 9 30 eastern yeah around there yeah yeah so he <laughs> usually does weekdays 9 and 9 30 <laughs> yeah. yeah um but he does a lot of awesome graphics and stuff on, on his things so if you guys need any graphics for your layouts and stuff make sure you go hit time up as well um appreciate you guys i will be off the next two weeks for vacation uh so we will be back in three weeks time with a new special guest um and uh hopefully have some more conversations then Uh, until next time guys i appreciate you guys all being here i'm going to end the stream so that way it doesn't continue on with more video game stuff for when i post and uh, i'll be back in about 10 minutes with some games so i will talk to you guys then thank you very much guys peace hey folks